Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Marina Moore. I'm a PhD student at NYU in the um, Secure Systems Lab, working with um, Justin Kapos and many others on Tough and other projects. My co-presenter, Joshua Locke, unfortunately, was not able to make it here today, but um, I want to give him credit for help with the slides and, and everything else. So, oop. All right, so what are we talking about today? Content repositories. So content repositories, basically just any kind of collection of content, usually um, somehow able to be um, addressed by a user, um, often with various different versions of the content, all stored in the same place and accessible. So as a quick example of what one of these can look like, we have various different packages stored on the content repository with different versions of these package, all associated with the name of, of the package. And there's also an index, which then points to all of these different, uh, all the different content on the repository, which the user can then talk to this index to either um, find a, the name of a package that they're looking for, or the, you know, the most recent version of a package or a specific version. The index will then point them to a path to the, the exact image they want to install, which they can then query and get onto their machine. It's kind of an overall view of how that works. However, um, as, with, as with many systems, there are a lot of things that can go wrong if pieces of, these, of the system are attacked. So if an attacker is able to gain access to this index, um, they're able to change either the location of the package that you're going to download, or they're able to change the version that you're going to download and maybe show you an older version that maybe has known vulnerabilities or some other problems, or just show you different, different versions of different packages that were never available at the same time. And these different versions could maybe have some incompatibilities that can lead to other vulnerabilities. And then when, when you request from this malicious index, it'll give you a bad path or some path that you're not expecting when you want to download this, this um, piece of content. Another thing that can go wrong is um, it can, you can be redirected to a whole other place to, to download the package. Um, and that can also be a bad way to go. And in addition, the entire um, content repository itself can be compromised and any of these different pieces of content on this repository can be replaced with malicious versions of, of these packages, image, artifacts, or wh whatever it is that, that's being stored. And this, this has happened in practice. There have been, um, these are, this is a collection of some recent attacks that have used uh, software update systems as a vector for um, distributing malware to, to users. And um, yeah, these continue to happen in practice. And it's not due to a lack of you know, smart people working for all these various different places. This is just a very um, tempting vector for attackers because it's a place where you know, you're installing a piece of software and then gonna run it on your machine. And so if the attacker can can mess with what you're installing, it's a very tempting thing for them to do. So what can we do to prevent this from happening to you? <laughs> um, this is where the update framework or TUF comes in. It's a framework for secure software updates um, that's designed to protect the, um, the freshness, consistency, and integrity of packages. And it does this at the same time as reducing the impact of a compromise and allowing for recovery when a compromise does happen. So in a bit more detail, so Tuff protects content by using cryptographic signatures in a couple of different places. It has signatures that go over the content itself in order to protect the integrity of the content that you're downloading. It also has signatures over the entire repository or you know, an index into the entire repository in order to, pr to protect the consistency of the different things that you're downloading from the repository. And finally, there are signatures um, over a kind of a heartbeat with a short expiration time in order to prove freshness of the metadata and the content that you're installing to make sure that you're not seeing old versions that may be malicious and or non-intended. TUF also reduces the impact of key loss through a couple of different mechanism, mechanisms. It separates responsibilities so that no single role or key is, um, is responsible for signing all the different content. So one key it has one responsibility and another key has another responsibility. So that if any one of these keys is compromised, it only, protect, it only compromises that one responsibility, which in most cases isn't enough to convince someone to install malware. And in order to you know, additional protection, have additional protection, each of these roles can also have a threshold of keys. So you don't just have one key signing for a single, for example, piece of content. You can have multiple different keys that are required to sign the same piece of content and they should agree on what's in that content so that and then when they're all verified, you can see that, okay, it's not just this one 
entity, which may be compromised, that thinks that um, this is true. It's also various other entities as well. And this can also be nice for um, ensuring some processes followed. So for example, if there's like a code review process that you want to ensure a certain number of people have reviewed the code before it goes on to the next step, you can kind of enforce this through a th requiring a threshold on that. And finally, Tuff balances the um, trust and responsibility by ensuring that um, the more vulnerable um, roles have, um, have less of an impact when those, those roles are compromised. So the roles that have online keys and, and require a lot of automation, they have less immediate impact when those roles are compromised. So that there's time for the system to recover before anything really bad happens with these more vulnerable roles. And finally, Tuff allows users to recover when a compromise does happen, either a compromise of a key or a compromise of any piece of the repository itself. And it does this in a few ways, primarily through hierarchical trust delegations. And the main goal of this hierarchical trust delegation is that if anything lower in this, in this hierarchy is compromised, anything above it in this hierarchy is able to re revoke those keys or replace them so that um, you know, users no longer use them. And what this looks like in TUF is you start with a root role at the top, which is obviously, you know, it's the root of trust for the system. So it can be protected using all of those mechanisms we talked about, threshold signatures and the keys stored in more secure locations because they don't need to be used as often. And then this root role delegates to the other roles in the TUF system, which includes that timestamp role that provides freshness, a snapshot role that provides consistency, and various targets roles that provide the integrity of the actual content. It also delegates to the root role itself to allow for some in-band key rotation of the root role so that even those root keys don't have to be stick around forever. They can be replaced using um, this in-band rotation. So the Tuff project has a bunch of different pieces, not just one thing. The Tuff specification is one of the, the big things that we do. And this describes the framework, including all those things I talked about with more specific metadata formats and workflows that explain how these things work in practice. Tuff is also includes this, these Tuff augmentation proposals, which are a process for proposing bigger changes to the specification or new features that, that we wanna add. And finally, we have a reference implementation of Tuff, which is written in Python and shows how this specification um, can be used in practice, what it looks like in the code. And our, we, we always aim to have the reference implementation in line with the current version of the specification so we can see how all these features work in practice. And we also make sure that any taps can be implemented in the reference implementation before they end up back in the specification so that we can work out all those bugs that happen when things are implemented in practice. In addition to um, the pieces that, like the core pieces of the Tuff project, there are also many different deployments and adoptions of Tuff. Um, these include both adoptions that directly use the Tuff specification, as well as adaptions that use pieces of the Tuff specification, but are adapted for, for slightly different um, threat models or th slightly different systems. In addition, there's some work in progress, adoptions and adaptions, as well as Uptane, which is a derivation of Tuff for automo automobiles, which allows for um, repository controlled, um, repository directed updates, sorry. And this is used in um, a variety of automobiles as well as in some IoT systems that require that kind of um, repository direction of updates rather than the user asking for the packages that they want. So that's, that's, that's where, where the Tuff project is. And so I'm gonna talk a bit now about some, some of the new changes to Tuff, some of the things that we're working on and some of the kind of the new pieces. And I'm gonna go into more detail about various of these. This is just kind of a a quick overview. So some of the things we're working on is um, clarifying the doc tough documentation and the specification to make sure sorry, that, um, that all this documentation is clear and that new users coming into, into this ecosystem can understand what's going on with the tough specification, how it can be used in their system. We've also been collaborating with the Notary V2 project to um, in order to um, facilitate uploading tough metadata directly to registries. And I'm gonna go into a lot more detail about that in a minute, that's one of our, our big projects. In addition, we have a couple of different collaborations with the SIGSTORE project, um, both integrating Fulcio 
into Tuff using that tap process um, for, to improve developer key management. Again, I'll have more details in a minute. And in addition, using Tuff as the root of trust in the SIG store project. So it's kind of a multi-directional integration. Um, we're also working on an ongoing integration of Tuff into PyPI, which is the Python packaging index, which is the, um, the repository used by PIP and various other um, Python package installers. We're also working on a, re a refactor of the reference implementation in order to improve readability and modularity so that other implementations looking to, to, looking to the reference implementation for guidance can have kind of a clear idea of which pieces of the reference implementation reference which pieces of the spec. And finally, we are working with members of the Intoto project and others on a new signature wrapper for Tuff. Um, this, this thing called Dizzy or the dead simple signing envelope, um, which improves the, the signing wrapper for Tuff and removes um, Tuff's kind of reliance on canonicalization, which has been um, you know, kind of a known issue with the spec. And so this is us working to improve that. Talk too long, the slides went dark. Here we are. Um, <laughs> so, and I'm gonna go a bit into detail about some of these things. So first of all, this is the integration of the full CRO, SIG Store's full CRO project into Tuff. So Tuff today requires that for end-to-end -end developer signing, that developers um, manage and keep safe a private key that they then use to sign metadata and, and upload it, et cetera. And the idea of this tap and this um, project is to ensure that, is to make this a lot easier so that developers don't have to keep this key safe over time. Because we've heard feedback that for many developers, this is like one of the biggest barriers to entry. And so we, Fulcio does this through the use of short-lived certificates that don't need to be saved over time. And they're backed by OICD systems, so credentials that the developers already maintain for things like email, GitHub, or anything else that they, they already have. And um, so what happens here is that Tuff delegates, instead of to a public key, it delegates to a Fulcio identity. And then um, the verification happens using the Fulcio process backed by OIDC. There's more, and there's more details. I forgot the link on this slide, but there is, the tap is available on, on GitHub. Oh, and, and in, in general, um, I'll, there's a lot of links included in these slides and they are available online if anyone wants to, to follow any of these links for more details, just as a quick aside. So the next kind of thing I wanted to cover is um, the work that um, the Tough Project's been doing with Nerdy V2. So Nerdy, as some of you may know, is a, um, is the, it's the, you know, the tool behind Docker Content Trust, and it's an implementation of Tuff for registries. And the idea of the Notary v2 effort is to improve kind of the usability of Notary so that it can be used in practice. And so this, be, this has been kind of a bit of a rede redesign and rethink of how we want to do this whole project. And so this, we've separated it into a lot of different sub-projects involving various different aspects, including you know, how we're uploading things to re registries and various other pieces. There's actually a talk later today if you want more details, about, more details about the overall project. The part I've been focusing on and the Tuff project's been working on more generally is this Tuff Notary subproject of Notary v2, which really focuses on storing the Tuff metadata on registries and including some additions to um, the Tuff specification and some adaptions for this specific project to allow for scalability of snapshot metadata, client-side selection of targets metadata to allow for less trust in the registry, and a couple of, of minor changes to allow for signing digests in, in, in the registry space. And here's a quick diagram of the um, kind of the current design for this, this tough notary work um, that involves, uh, in order to allow for um, using tough metadata across multiple different repositories on one registry or on many registries. Um, this design separates out the tough repository um, from the content itself. And in order to, um, you know, to choose, and then the, the, the target's metadata then delegates to the repository, which then contains um, the actual signatures on the digests. So there are a lot of, we have a lot of ongoing integrations of Tuff into various different projects. Um, the PyPI integration, which I mentioned earlier, we are almost done with the part one of this implementation, which um, involves registry signing of images. And then part two involves um, developer signing. So just kind of 
extending the process back one, one step at a time. Um, so there's also an integration into Condor Forge in Bomba. And there's a very, very exciting, there's a new implementation of Tuff being written in PHP for use in Drupal and Typo3. So there's a, a great group of people working on that. In addition, there's um, some work happening on SigStore, which I'm gonna talk a bit about now. So um, in the SigStore project, we've worked with, we sorry, we worked with the SigTor project in order to back both the record transparency log and the full COCA with a tough root of trust. So this, this, this means that it allows for both recovery of um, these roles if there's a compromise, and it allows for users to get the, the, um, the public keys for these roles using this tough metadata backing it. So there are, we have a lot of different implementations of Tuff, and so here's a, here's a couple of quick updates about the different implementations that are going on. It's kind of a, a quick overview if you're interested in getting involved in any of these. So as I mentioned before, the Python Tuff reference, reference implementation is undergoing a refactor. The refactor of the client side of the system is almost complete, and we're looking at getting started on the repository side of this refactor to kind of use this new metadata API that we created to make the, these relationships more clear. In GoTuff, we've been working towards um, compliance with 1.0 of the Tuff specification, including adding things like delegations and some of the other somewhat newer features of the specification that hadn't made it into this implementation in the past. Uptane, which is that um, adaption of Tuff for automotive systems, had a 1.2 release of the, the standard this summer and we're working towards a 2.0 release in the next few months. And this includes some interesting new pieces, including some kind of guidance about how Upkin can be used with broader supply chain security techniques, and a little bit of discussion about aftermarket over-the-air updates and how these can be used in the Uptain system. Google's Fuchsia, Fuchsia um, implementation of Tuff has been shipped on next-gen nest, nest hubs, which we believe is the first use of Tuff in, um, in you know, real life um, IoT devices, which is pretty exciting. And in addition, I, as I mentioned, the PHP Tuff is having its initial implementation. Lots of great for folks working on that. A few implementations also didn't make the list. They're just still ongoing, including the Rust Tuff um, implementation and an implementation called Tuff, T-O-U-G-H, which is also in Rust. So finally, um, all, of the, all of this is open source software, or almost all of it is open source software, and we would love any participation in, in this project. And so um, this includes both um, participation in the implementations and integrations of Tuff. So if you have a favorite programming language, you can work on either the existing implementation in that language, or you can make a new one. And in addition, if there's any um, projects interested in using Tuff to secure software distribution or updating, um, we would love to, love to chat. Um, we, we encourage contribu contributions directly back to the specification. If there's anything that's unclear, anything that, um, you know, even if anything that doesn't make sense on a first read, that's great feedback for us to hear so that we can improve, um, continue to improve the specification. And of course, if there's any new feature that's not currently included in Tuff, feel free to submit a tap and we can discuss um, you know, how and whether we can make that happen. And um, feel free to chat with us. So we, we have a mailing list, again, linked from these slides, also available on the CNCF Slack. There are, we have, I think we have three different channels there, an overall Tuff channel, so for general questions, anything about the specification, and then specific channels for development of Go Tuff and Python Tuff. And of course, we're also on GitHub. Um, all of this is open source, feel free to, to take a look around. And I don't think I included a link to the um, rendered version of the specification here, but that's also a great way to get involved, just to read through that. Let us know about that. And if I want to conclude with a thank you to all of the wonderful Tough maintainers that make all this work possible, and also to the maintainers and contributors of all of the sub-projects, implementations, everyone else who works with us. Lots of great people. They didn't actually fit all in one slide, so <laughs> thank you to everyone. And yes, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm available on all of these mediums, or right now I think we have a few minutes left, so let me know.
All right, well, um, maybe to give everybody in the room a chance, we've got a question online. Okay. Um, Cosign allows the uploading of signatures to registries as OCI manifests. Does this conflict with what is being proposed with Tuff and Notary V2? I wouldn't say it conflicts. I think that they're both working in like a similar space. I think that um, with slightly different models and slightly different uses of the registries. So I think they're, they're similar, but different is what I would say. <laughs> got it. All right. So you talked about um, the Fulcio project uh, integration as a root of trust. Um, has there any been, sorry, has there been any discussions uh, regarding potentially using Spire or Spiffy as an implementation as a, of a root of trust? Yes, there, um, I don't, we don't have any official um, caps about that, but that's definitely something that we talk about. So Tuff doesn't actually, um, so Tuff assumes that you start with um, the, the keys for the root metadata on, you get it somehow. And one of the things we do talk about is, you know, some people do trust on first use, other kinds of things especially in the, um, the container space where you have ephemeral clients, things like that. Something like Spiffy Inspire is a, a really great way to distribute those initial root keys to then build up the trust in the system. So yeah, definitely something that we, that we talk about and that's a, a great thing to, to mention, yeah. There's someone over there. Is, is there any um, maybe plans on maybe using Tuff to sign uh, Git commits or anything like that? Um, I don't know that we have any ongoing work there. I think um, there's other projects, including I think in Hodo and others that work more on the um, sorry the, the, the code side of you know a part of the software supply chain. I think there's definitely ideas from Tuff that could work there as well. We just haven't you know not specifically. So. Any other questions, virtually or otherwise? Okay, great. Thanks once again. All right, yes, thank you everyone.